Hi, guys. Thank you for listening to the Gig Economy Podcast. We're here with Matt Lafferty from the app Curry. We're excited to talk to him tonight as Jesper and I always are. Actually, Jesper teases me that I have, what are the, what's it called? Schedule C's, all those Schedule C's I get. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I have like seven or eight apps that I run during gig time in the winter. And uh, I did actually sign up for your app. I actually got a notification today, not in my area, but uh, about 50 miles east. So I was pretty excited about that. I was actually at my daytime job, so I, I couldn't do anything with it. But Matt, thank you so much for uh, coming to the Gig Economy podcast and talking about your app. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So tell me a little bit how, uh, let's talk about what Curry is, how it started, and then uh, let's, and then we'll kind of dive into your story, how you got into this uh, this company. Yeah, sure. Where, where would you like me to start? What what we do exactly? Yeah, what what is Curry? Just from a layman's terms of like you're trying to recruit a new driver, what what can you tell them about that? Yeah, I mean, we're we're an app where it allows you to deliver construction supplies, you know, rather than food or people. So okay, sort of like 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 any other you know gig platform. Yeah, uh, it's just not food. Not food, not people, yeah. <laughs> not food, not people. So when you say construction supplies, do you, is you no? Know, I uh, our little pre meeting, I talked about auto parts. You don't do anything like that. Like if someone needs some brake pads from A to B, oh, we do that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're like our mission statement says the the way the way the world delivers construction and industrial supplies. Okay, okay. so uh, auto parts fits right in there with industrial supplies. Oh, at least for us and and how we how we categorize things. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I uh, I did download your app. And it was relatively easy to sign up. Uh, right on. Right. First question out of the gate. I got a notification today. Is it set up what I put my vehicle in? So I have an SUV. It's not going to give me like a, a, a double wide trailer that I got to move from Lansing to St. <laughs> John's, right? No. Okay. No, no, no. Like there, actually, if you, if you had claim, like when you're, when you're entering your vehicle information, like there's actually like, you know, a pull down menu. It's yep. like, Hey, do you have a trailer? And you can put that in. So whatever you put in there is what will match with the delivery that's in queue and, and okay. re- requesting requesting your services. So Well, that's good to know because some of these apps like to take advantage of drivers okay. and they're like, yeah, we really need somebody to deliver this. So I don't care if you just have an SUV, you're going to cram it in the back. So I, I, <laughs> no, I mean, you know, when you start up, you have outliers like, oh, well, that was a mistake. And you just try and like, hone it in, make it better and better and better. For sure. Right. We've had some outliers as we've you know developed and grown, but never, ever done intentionally. Excellent. So, so who is, I mean, you mentioned that this is for the uh, construction and like professional in, in industry in, in, in general, who is your target audience? Who is the people that you really want using this on the other, obviously the riders is us, right? The drivers, sorry, mm-hmm. is, is the gig, gig workers, but who is the other people? Who is the, who is the, the people res- uh, um, like ordering? Right, right, right. Okay. I mean, so yeah, well, I guess we'll talk about the like supply side with, with drivers and different vehicle types and all that. Yep. Uh, later but for as far as on the demand side for our our customers yep it's major and and, and smb and mom pop shots but anybody or entity that is selling construction supplies materials i mean think like you know plumbing hvac mm-hmm. electrical irrigation uh lumber all the metals i mean all, all kinds of things of that nature things that are palletized things are non-palletized small things that go into cars okay. um we just started realizing there's there's huge demand for this because all these construction supply stores. I mean, they, they can be billion dollar companies nationwide with thousands of branches across the U S most people haven't really heard of them because right. most of us are like weekend warriors. We, we just go to like the home improvement stores, like mm-hmm. Lowe's home Depot, Ace and all that. We still work with companies like that, but you know, home improvement sector, but there's this huge, huge amount of companies that just need our services. So we connect them with the, with the drivers in order to make those deliveries for them. Okay. Yeah, I think it's that's a would be huge as a foreman on a job when you need this part and you're like, you're going to send Joe over here who makes twenty five dollars an hour and you pay Benny's for you're going to take him off that framing job he's doing to go get a box of nails. And it's like, this is this is stupid. I need somebody to deliver these things so I can keep Joe working on the job site. Exactly. I mean, it's hugely inefficient. Yeah, right. I can, but see that thing I can understand, like if I was not an, like an owner operator of a GC and like, you know, I got, I got to cruise down to the supply store. Like in some cases it's good for relationship building for like the sales relationship, but it's definitely not needed all the time. Mm-hmm. And, and so that, that's just where we come in. 
And at first we, we actually launched the app on the customer side to contractors at first for like the first three or four months and very early 2019, you know, after three or four months in, I was driving myself. So it was my co-founder, Brian Gonzalez. He had a spinner van. I, you know, I was driving around in my Ford Focus and, you know, and then we divvy up the deliveries. started realizing that like, wow, a huge percentage of these deliveries fit in my car. Okay. Um, which was unexpected. Right. So, right, yeah. and then when we'd pull up to these uh, construction officers, we saw, oh, oh my gosh, like that steak bed truck has a, a, a box this big in the back of that truck <laughs> and they're driving it to the site. They have yeah. to like, they've outfitted themselves for like the, the large deliveries. Cause you know, they have to, it's like, okay, well, we've got to get a truck. Yeah. Um, so they get a truck and then they send these small things. And now I can't even drive them through. I can't drive through any city without seeing these, you know, steak bed trucks trail. I'm like, we can move that. We can move that. We'll mm-hmm. throw that in a car. We'll save them $400 like every other day. Like just right. my, my mind can't. Now you guys will see it. You'll be on the road. Like you'll just see these <laughs> steak bed trucks and construction oh, I, supplies I, I and you'll, you'll see it nearly empty. I, yeah. I, th- I think I saw a semi with a two by four once. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, totally. It happens all the it, day in, day out. And like, like Jason, to your point, like they're just, it, it's such a big opportunity, right? Like, they're sending them that way because they have to, and they're in that position. But we were just like, we identified a thing just by talking with contractors, like, Oh, wow. I, we, we could save you a month of all the supply runs. Cause they're doing like an hour every day. It's like, right. they're losing like a month of work time. And well, that's how I got started. Yeah. The freight guys probably don't like you though, because they get paid, you know, the 300 bucks to transfer that one, two by four. And now you got Joe blow uh, who, for the gig economy who can, he'll do it for 25 bucks. Well, the thing is we like on our platform, we have, you know, we have owner operators that have right now we're like the only gig out there where they have, you know, like not just sedans and, you know, and other cars and hatchbacks and all that, but like, we also like to optimize for SUVs, for pickup trucks, pickup trucks with pipe racks, pickup trucks with trailers and people who have, they have a box truck. Maybe they use Monday, Wednesday, but they want to augment their work on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. And so yeah. we allow them to do that. They don't mind. I mean, we, we have folks that will augment their work, their current work, like like you mentioned, and then just augment their work with us. So they actually don't mind that much because it wasn't even an option. Okay. So and maybe they'll rent from you. Maybe they'll rent you to come do it for you. For them. <laughs> so you talked about you and your partner. He had a Sprinter van. You had a Ford Focus. And you realized a lot of the stuff that you could move. So a, a question popped into my head. What is, I mean, I know you have the stats on and may, maybe you don't. I don't know. But you can see who makes the most money on the platform. Would it be someone with a sprinter van? Cause I look at it like, Hey, like I do gig work. I like the opportunity that I could get a, a notification while I'm delivering, uh, you know, Jimmy, not Jimmy Johns. They don't use, they use the one company I pick that they're adamant on not using gig workers for delivery <laughs> uh, subway. So yeah, the one company that's like F F the gig economy. So I'm delivering for Subway and I'm like, oh, I can go deliver these parts, whatever. But in my head, I'm thinking, well, if I can make my daily goal with a Sprinter van, I mean, maybe I go buy a used Sprinter van for, you know, a couple grand or whatever. So I'd just be curious who on the platform makes the most, you know, average most money with what vehicle. Yeah. So it truly varies. I mean, just depending on like, you know, sometimes the urgency or like maybe it's a, at a time where like, okay, like we're just going to pay more for this and the algorithm figures that out and like deploys it on waiting times, you know, just like any other platform would. But the thing is, I mean, across the board, like we're paying 25, 30% more than all the other folks out there. So we have drivers that will just like constantly check and they would much prefer to take, take one of our rides. We were in the early days. Like we had drivers just calling in, like, Hey, you got anything? Uh, Yeah, we got something coming up and you know, half hours, like had some like schedules. We're just like, you know, on a, on a Google, like we did some crazy stuff in the beginning, but it's really scaled yeah. since then. And just, we've gotten specific, but we did that because we wanted to understand both sides. What incentivize, right. incentivizes people like it's going to be money. And, and also earlier you're talking about like, like folks on a construction site making like mm-hmm. prevailing wage, like maybe they're like, you know, high tech, like electricians are making like 90 plus an hour, uh, some rate like that. Like they need those supplies to be delivered and the, the wholesale distributor. They want to make that sale. Otherwise they're going to lose it to the competitors. So, yeah. um, and we don't take advantage. Of, I mean, our pricing is our pricing, so it just makes sense for wholesalers, suppliers. Right. There's like yes, and away it goes. And so, yeah, I mean, sometimes people at big trucks will get will get paid more just by like gas is more expensive. They can be more in demand at certain times of the day. So, but okay. really, really doesn't vary too much. 
So how often does the supplier pay for your service compared to the guy who needs it at the, at the oh, job like site? Ninety nine percent of the time. So the yeah, whoever whoever books it is the one who's paying for it. So a supplier wholesaler, they're our customer. So we're okay. serving our customer's customer. So the, the contract. Yeah. Okay. I actually, that's I a good question. Was, I thought it I was the other way around. I yeah. thought it was the other way around too. The guy on, on the work side say, hey, I need a box of nails. Oh, shoot. What happened? We run out of nails. I got to call and get a Indirectly, box of nails. Indirectly, they'll, they'll pay for the supplies. And then the distributor wholesaler, yeah. I mean, they, they might decide to, you know, bake in the cost or share the cost of the delivery, or they'll just eat it all and pay for it for the customer because they do a high volume amount with them or um, it, right. it's just you know our prices are priced and they choose what to do with that so do you have level or like price levels of, of if you will like from some some of your um suppliers some of your customers based on how much they use you do they get a better sure rate? we so we we have some volume discounts for extremely high volume customers yeah that exists okay that that that's pretty cool and of course uh, I'm, my assumption is that the size of the item that needs to be moved also ties into your algorithm of the price, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, if we're going to send a, you know, F F-250 with a, you know, 16-foot trailer that's carrying like a 1,000 pounds of, you know, 20-foot copper right. pipe, like, yeah, that, that's that's going to cost more. And we're going to, uh, and, and that's to be expected. Like, our, like our customer expects sure. that, like, and uh, it just it just makes sense within reason. So I didn't, I didn't see the job that Jason got got accepted well, today. He, I didn't either. I was going well, to. I was going to say. So how, <laughs> how does the how does the driver knows how much he's going to pick up before he gets the job? You know, it's going to fit in your vehicle. One, um, and we're very transparent with what drivers will be paid and how far they'll be driving. So that should have been in the not notification that Jason received. Yeah, I should have clicked on it, but the notification came in at eighty five dollars for thirty four miles. Is like. There's no way whatever this is, is going to fit. Because to me, that's a good payout for 34 right. miles. I was like, yeah, you got to do the 34 back. But then like 15 minutes later, it bumped up to 100. I was like, damn, like <laughs> I would totally take this because we're from in, uh, from Michigan and Grand Rapids. Mm -hmm. So Lansing's 50 minutes away. It yep. wouldn't be worth me to drive to Lansing and do it. But if it was in Grand Rapids and I was on the, you know, doing gig work, I'd be like, oh, I'll take that in a heartbeat. Right. So I, I wish I would have clicked on it to see what I was actually moving. Well, I, I can't I can't wait till you. So you do it, and then uh, you can you can call me. Let me know how it goes. I would love the feedback. Yeah, like the I direct mean, feedback. I always appreciate that. Yeah, I wasn't even active, but clearly they still sent me the the notification, which I'm fine with. I'm totally fine with. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it because I mean I'll be perfectly transparent. My goal in the winter, I make most of my money in the summer. I do lawn fertilization, but the winter I kind of take a step back and I do gig work full time, and my wife works, and I spend a lot of time with the kids, but. Full transparency. I, my goal is 150 bucks a day, so yeah. that one one run would have been almost, and that would have been probably f what 90 minutes worth of work between right. the drive and unload and everything. Uh -huh. So I would have took that in like a hot second. <laughs> yeah, and, it, and it's real. So I mean, I I'm looking forward to getting a call and let me know how it goes. And honestly, <laughs> it it would have fit in your SUV. Like okay, sometimes that stuff's just like fold the seats down and goes in there. You know. Yeah. Yeah, my pilot is. I have an old school pilot. Well, it's not the newer Honda Pilot, but those seats fold down. I mean, you could fit a sheet of drywall in there. Right. I mean, I fit a ton of like when I do Amazon Flex. Like, yep, I can fill that sucker up with some packages. Yeah, it, it, it's funny. Like most of the, uh, a lot of drivers I speak with, they find that like not for Curry, but for for other platforms, that most of the deliveries occur like in the evening. Do, do you find that to be true where you're at? In regards to what, like food delivery? Yeah, or f food or 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 people like where the like surges are, where where like the most activity occurs in your area. Yeah, I mean, I would say yes. My goal, though, I uh, so th this has been a huge transition through COVID. Like uh, our podcast started when there was only rideshare, right? When there was only Uber and Lyft, there was no other competitor. We started in 2017, and right. we've 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 trained we've changed so much. Right. You know, we changed our name. We had to rebrand and everything to the gig economy. But uh, I don't really take passengers anymore. I actually don't want to. And I don't want to work at night anymore. So like most of my work is done during the day. Mm -hmm. I typically do food delivery from 11 to 1. And then I'll usually take an Amazon route. And then usually between those two, I'm hitting my goal. And then I go home. Now, Jesper, on the other hand, he hasn't driven in a while. He hates the delivery part. He loves the people part. So 
his time would be you're right night nine to one a.m. And I'm I was primarily a weekend warrior. Um, okay. Yeah. It's just it's hard to talk to pass- package- packages. You know, it's just. Oh, a- it is. <laughs> you tell them to f off, and they don't talk back. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so funny. Like I I mentioned this like to someone else. I'm like, yeah, you know, like you know, Brian, my my co-founder, like we we cooked up this whole thing. Like we have the the perfect passenger, and we just really we're like we're gonna market this. You know, like. Yeah. driver with the windows down listen to whatever they want no one yeah. you know <laughs> no one's passing gas in the back or like leaving crumbs on your seat uh, it's just oh. it's just like you get to do it you get to do what you want to do they don't talk back it's like you know i think it's perfect like him and i are like polar opposites yeah. uh well well i did have a good i mean i've i've probably got six thousand uh uber rides right so i've Dang. i've i've definitely got my belt of pukers and, oh yeah and then i'm just like why do I want to deal with this drunk 22 year old at, at two in the morning? Who's got crying about her boyfriend. I'm like, screw this. I should be in bed at two in the morning and I should have already hit my money goal eight hours ago. So, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I am super stoked to try your app. I don't, again, I don't know how active it is in Grand Rapids, but it's definitely something we'll talk to our fans about. Awesome. For sure. I, was, I was going to say you are national right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're national. So, so how how big are you in Michigan? Just you know, on an average level. Honestly, I don't know. I mean, just with the way that our nationwide stats like fluctuate, I don't have like an exact percentage. But okay, uh, we're I mean we're very 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 busy. I mean, uh, we we have certain markets that we'll focus on and market to just because they're they're much sure. bigger. So we'll throw some efforts there. But we we don't say no to like any wild growth and wild growth being like a supply store and you know some suburban area that wants to have a delivery we're we're still going to say yes to that and service it so well grand rapids is not that different from la <laughs> no uh, I, mean, I actually I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan i'm a big fan of michigan so well grand rapids is an insane awesome place to live it, it always gets in the top 10 list and we are we are build they are building Oh, yeah. I mean, I, everywhere like time. that, but I mean, there is a mm-hmm. housing crisis at, in Grand Rapids. Like, people can't even get apartments. Like, it's nuts. I was going to say, if you want to grow anywhere in Grand Rapids, you need to reach out to Rockford Construction. If you get to <laughs> deal with them, they own like everything. Okay? They own everything <laughs> at Grand Rapids. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll call them right after this and ask them where they buy their supplies. Or <laughs> I mean, they can just complain. They can complain like, "Hey, why can't you deliver to me right when I want?" And I know. Well, we'll yeah. set them up. No, I really like your uh, your app and your idea. Before we uh, cut off, we're kind of doing this backwards, but how did you get into this kind of thing? Like, were you a gig worker before or just an entrepreneur that, that saw a need and, and went with it? Uh, I'll make it, I'll try and make it super short. Like, I, I mean, I lived overseas for like seven years and the original, you know, business prospectus on that, like the idea was to broker luggage space internationally because everyone gets a hundred pounds. And yep. hey, why not just uh, offset the cost of their their ticket? A lot of people overseas, I, myself included, over there. I wanted to receive things from from other other countries, and you know, a lot of people don't use that luggage space. You know, business travelers and things like that. So that was the original idea, and like I was I was going to send this over to my co founder Brian Gonzalez, and he, he's the smartest dude I knew. He worked at Dollar Shave Club. Um, he oh. and I never, he he and I had never talked about. He was very early there too, like. We had, we had never talked about starting a business together, but we've been friends for like 12 or 13 years at that point. And mm-hmm. he just, he hit me up on a, he actually hit me up with a DM on Twitter. It's like, Hey, you want to start a business together? I, I, I couldn't believe it. Cause I was about to send him what I had just written on here. So it was very cool. Wow. Yeah. And it was, it was, it was awesome. It was just really cool. And so when we got back, it didn't make sense. Where overseas were you? I, I was living in Laos. Oh, Laos. Nice. I don't yeah. even know where that is. I've heard of it, but yeah. is that a... Asian country, yeah, Southeast Asia, um, Southeast yeah. Asia, yeah, borders five countries, right? Uh, landlocked. I mean, sorry, like that land linked. It was the how. Okay. Yeah, uh, people like to say it now. Uh, make it positive. Okay. That's funny. Uh, you brought up the Dollar Shave Club. I've got a like a bone to pick with them. They've really changed in the last year. I mean, they they hadn't. Uh, this is totally digressing, but this no, is do it. The show I, lo- I love digressions. Do it. But it was um, they had an app for a while and then they discontinued their app. So I'm like, okay, there's some red flags right there. Something's going on where you. But he sold it, though, didn't he? The the guy that owned Dollar Shake Club? I thought they sold it to an investment company or something. They may have. Maybe Uh, maybe you know the dude on that, Matt. Yeah, yeah, I think it was was Unilever or Unilever. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. Oh, the big soap company. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, so. 
So yeah, so now they got rid of the app. Okay, that's fine. I'm okay with that. But that's some red flags right there when you get rid of an app. And it was a great app. So yeah. now when I'm trying to like remove stuff from the cart, like when the subscription comes up, it doesn't mm-hmm. let you. You can snooze one product, but if you try to get rid of ev- like the razors and some deodorant, it yeah. won't let you remove it. <laughs> and I'm pissed about I'm like, I'm canceled. Like I just got, I don't use razors. Clearly my beard's big, but my wife uses the <laughs> razors Same. for her. Yeah. And so I'm like, I think I'm going to Harry's because I'm like, you, and I sent an email about it. Then no one emailed me back. I'm like, oh man, y'all have changed. Like you, you came from, like, I was with you guys for years and I'm just like, I get it, man. Like, I guess I would sell out too. I didn't know they sold out, but I was so pissed. I'm like, it won't. So I, I even tried it on the, I was using it on the mobile, not even the app. And I was like, okay, maybe I need to go to a desktop and I'm trying to remove it and it just won't let me. And I'm yep. like. So I just snoozed it. I'm like, all right, I'm just going to cancel next time. Everything like cancel my account. Don't ever email me again. <laughs> oh, so frustrating when companies do that. Like, come on. Yeah. Well, I just, I mean, full transparency. I, I switched to Harry's too. So, um, okay. <laughs> I, I, and, and, and honestly, when, when they spun down their, uh, their mobile app, we, we got some pretty kick-ass engineers, um, oh, nice. after that, after that happened. Okay. Yeah. No. So that, that like those types of mistakes are like, are to our advantage so yeah i just don't who get in the mobile app was nice like it wasn't like clunky either i'm like why did you get you're phasing like again i'm not a huge business owner or anything but i've been around to know like when you're taking something away like that that's easy for the customer there's some red flags there <laughs> well i mean who know who knows what the politics behind it was right? yeah but it was probably don't. as matt said you know it's probably there was spinning down some of the mobile division getting rid of the, getting rid of some people i mean it's who knows Cle- clearly if uh was it unilever or whatever they're like oh yeah we're cutting the fat out of this crap like you know what i mean and then you know just well, may- maybe the point of buying it was to killing it who knows yeah who knows screw them Sometimes that happens. <laughs> Sorry, man. Yeah, I should have brought I should have so, brought Brian in this conversation. He'd give you like the inside. He'd give you the inside scoop and like. You know, oh, be, be I love beam of I love dirt. This. So Matt, when Uber comes knocking on the door, what what is the number yeah. that's going to make you say? Yeah, yes? what's your number? <laughs> that's that's not that's not in the plan right now. Um, oh we're, sure. We're just, no, seriously, I, we're we're going to scale this thing. So. Awesome. That is, I appreciate I, that. You know, I, I'm actually really, really happy to hear that. And it was meant as a joke because for us, the more gig economy companies on the market, the better, right? Because yeah. we don't need somebody to just set all the rules and kind of make, you know, do everything because that's not the right well, way to do it. Yeah. Uber just, uh, they're getting sued because they tried to buy right. GoPuff. Yep. Which is oh, a really? convenience. Del- yeah. And the FTC is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, you guys are going to be a op- monopoly. I'm like, yes. Like, do not let uber buy them because it's not fair like when you have these huge companies and that kind of takes the way of the gig economy out of it right yeah, well we already know yeah see, nobody likes the algorithm uber's algorithm right so we don't want it we, we don't want it negotiating your prices <laughs> oh so they are like the bottom feeder i know it's hopefully cool. Hopefully, no one listens to this and from Uber. Anyways, so I do have one uh, real, real first, real fast question that kind of just came to my mind. Yeah. So Uber is all market b- priced. Um, is your guys uh, is your price scale the same nationally, and it's uh, only based on the size and and and, and the kilometer or miles, not kilometers, miles. Yeah. yeah or yeah, is so, it different in different markets? So it's it's there. There is some variation across geographies, and it depends on what type of offering or service that our customer has chosen if it's like um if it's a recurring uh route for example a truck route where you know a truck will come on a on a scheduled cadence you know four or five days a week every morning that's typically charged customer on time so the driver's paid on time and then uh for the other ones are like more like hot like we call them hot shots a to b deliveries that sometimes those could be multi-stop as well but uh those those are paid on on mileage so okay yeah, I would think you'd have to do do a little scale, not like Uber's like yes. it's very scaled. I mean, a city Lansing, the one that the notification came in with your app, it pays different than Grand Rapids and we're 50, 50 minutes from each other. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's pretty nuts. So, yeah. Well, Matt, I appreciate the time. This has been super fun. Yeah, um, I'm here. glad that we were able to connect. Any other questions for Matt? No, nope, that's it. want to direct? trash any other companies that 
<laughs> well, we can always throw we can throw Lyft in there too. You know, they don't want me either. Man, I feel I feel like I'm gonna get an email after this just just for some folks like, hey, we're. Well, it's not live yet, Matt. You know, <laughs> no, I, I it always, won't be tonight. <laughs> roll with it. I always do that. Like something pops in my head, and I just have a bone to pick. I don't care. Oh, like that's what I love about podcasting. Like no one owns me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm just like, I mean, I'm respectful, but I'm like, hey, this this company it literally has nothing to do with gig economy. But I always do that. I'm mad at my insurance company too, and I take opportunities to throw them under the bus as well. I, so. I will I will chat on insurance any day if you want to like complain. I'm there for you. So just call me up. <laughs> I, know, that was actually away. one one good question. I just real fast had when mm. the stuff is in your car, who is who who insures that? We're we're responsible for that. Yeah. So okay. our, our insurance okay. is responsible for like because we have like we have uh, you know car cargo cargo insurance for the supplies. So okay. So yeah. if something happens, what happens if something happens to my car and I'm you know are you going to cover that too? That that works the same way as all the other gig platforms. Okay. So okay, cool. Except since we're not transporting people, like we don't like yeah. the it's you know it, our our type of insurance is much more affordable than it would be for like Uber or Lyft, for example, because you know the, yeah, when yeah. you're transporting someone, that's like some seriously high coverage. Yeah. Yes. Way to bring up and way to bring that up. Bring the room down. We we're going out hey, I, high and need to talk about insurance. About insurance I, like, like this is good though because he's covering happy. just as well or better. It's good. <laughs> Way to go, Jesper. Anyways. Well, Matt, uh, hopefully we can connect down the road for something else. But, uh, yeah, I downloaded the app. It was super easy to download. I was up and running within a couple of minutes. So this fall, I, I usually uh, March through October, I'm doing fertilizing, and then I do gig work full time in the winter. So, so Matt, okay. real fast. Go in there and deactivate him right Shut now. Shut up. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious, though. Like, I'm, I'm gonna, after you know this is done recording, I'm going to give you my cell phone. So when you're like okay. in cool. the middle of it or afterwards, you got feedback, I'll, I'm all ears. Yeah, I definitely, I have no problem giving feedback, uh, cool. positive or negative. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like just the, the comments on oh, this guy's per- like perfect because the comments for Dollar Shave Club insurance, Mike. I'll, I'll, yeah, you can you can glean the most from the people who are just the most like just transparent and honest. Like, hey, this yeah, this part sucks, but I like this. You know, I like that. Yeah, for take sure. that all day. All right, cool, Matt. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot for your time. I uh, hope you so have a good Matt. night. Thank you very much. Appreciate you guys. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.